guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. Ooh, I can show off my mug. Hey guys, I'm Kate Kavanaugh and I write things. Was that dumb? It was dumb. It's fine. <laughs> so today I am starting a new project and actually I'll be working on this project when Becca and I have our next live write-in. I think on Thursday and this should be going up on Wednesday. So I will be fresh off <laughs> of starting this story. Now I have talked a little bit about this story in the plot versus premise and I haven't done a whole lot of outlining so I honestly just thought I would be vlogging the experience of writing and coming up with the story as it happens. <laughs> so I have a really cool premise and a really awesome main character and I'm very excited and I actually have the entire first chapter solidified in my mind. I just haven't written it yet. That'll be filled in soon. <laughs> and so I figured today I'm going to get out the parts that I know this first chapter and then I will do some outlining maybe in another vlog. <sighs> I'm so excited and okay the coolest part is that I'm actually going to start at the last sentence of the story and work my way back from there because I have, ooh, I have the last sentence and it's gonna be like, pow! I'm so excited. Okay, let me write it. Okay, this is so weird. So I started chapter one and I just put the last line that I know and then I went to chapter two and I actually started writing chapter two before I wrote chapter one. All of my intentions <laughs> immediately flew out the window. I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right, I am now sitting at, I don't know that you can see that, 757 words. And actually 699 of those words came from this first chapter. I, oh, 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 okay, I'm gonna get some food. I'm going to get more coffee. And then I will tell you a little bit more about this story and kind of the start of this first chapter, what's kind of taking the story off, i.e. the only parts I really, really know. <laughs> So this story is kind of interesting in that it was inspired by a conversation that my dad was relaying to me. And like a lot of story ideas, it was like one thing made me think of another thing, which made me think of another thing. And I was like, what if I tied all of those things together into one? <laughs> and thus this story premise was born. And actually, let me show you. Okay, first off, in this specific file, I have two story ideas. It's called my project ideas file. Project ideas. So both of the story ideas are revolving around death in some way. <laughs> one of them is where death is an actual character. It's completely different from this story premise that I'm working on, but this story premise is like a mix of... So it was inspired by my dad and his friend talking about the celebrity, and then two weeks later, the celebrity unfortunately passes. Now, that happened multiple times. <laughs> that my dad's friend had just mentioned someone then all of a sudden they up and die. And my dad was like, uh, keep my name out of your mouth. And his friend was like, oh, I just used your nickname. So we're totally cool, right? <laughs> my dad was like, <laughs> so I thought how genius would it be if there was a God of death and there was a society and a world built around this idea that if you know someone's name, their given name, their born name, that you then had the power to request the god of death to come and take them. I built uh, some more stuff in, but that was it. It was like a mix of like, let's add some Rumpelstiltskin in there with the power of the name. Let's add some like Nostradamus stuff in there. Let's add all these things and then let's ask the question, what would a society be like if you never spoke names or if names were a very special thing? But also, and let's say if you kill someone, then the god of death will also then take your life. It's like a very different kind of dynamic. I even have like a backstory about how you have to name things because a village at one point tried to circumvent the god of death, which the god of death did not appreciate. And so it came down and took all of the babies who were not named. So it's like a whole twisted kind of thing. And I really like this premise. It's really interesting. And then the character is this person who is struggling with her belief system because three years ago she killed someone and the god of death did not immediately take her. And since that time three years ago she has taken the life of 17 other people. So that is basically 
the idea. But the idea is not a plot, right? So I'm building in some plot stuff. So I have a couple minor characters that are actually introduced in this first chapter. I say minor characters. Minor characters that are going to become main characters actually have a kickoff event and that there is a murder and we witness the god of death taking the other person's life, the one that committed the murder. And then at the very end, I have the main character, the sentence that popped into my head is, my name is, and she gives the name, and three years ago, I killed someone. Like that is the last sentence in the first chapter. That is it. And I feel like that just Ooh, so you have this setup of this first chapter and we're kind of understanding that this is an interesting kind of society. They're about to go on a journey. The main character has their own struggles. And then we get this reveal and we're like, oh shit. I did also realize <laughs> in the writing of this, with the exception of a few choice characters like the main character, this is playing up so to my strengths so that I don't have to name anyone. I don't have to name anyone. It's amazing. But it has been kind of fun to try and work out what, how to describe people is different because even the best friend, this main character's best friend that she's grown up with, she doesn't know her name. So this is also helping me and personally working on my description of characters, making sure I name physical aspects, things that people would notice if you don't have a name, kind of using trade and profession as placeholders and then adjective descriptions. It's I just, it's so interesting. I'm having a blast with it in writing this first chapter. And then the other thing, of course, is adding in more kind of cultural layers, like dumb teenagers giving their lovers at the time their name as like a way of bonding, because that's the kind of thing I think dumb teenagers would do in this world. Not really realizing the full impact or consequence of giving someone your born name when they could theoretically give up the name to the God of death. Now, there are reasons why you wouldn't just want to go around naming names because of course people can find out it's you and that leads to a whole, you know, I, I have a lot to explore. I have a lot of questions that I don't have yet answered, but I guess I just got to keep writing. So let's do that. <laughs> All right, we're taking a quick break to go to the library. If you feel like I'm always going to the library in these vlogs, me too, but that's cause I am. So let's get on the road. <laughs> Go in for one, come out with five. If that ain't the dig story of my library life. <laughs> the book I think I'm most excited for is this one because I can look at it as like part just interesting information and part research for books. I've always been curious about like what plants are edible <laughs> and I like that this one, I don't know if you can see it. It is an illustrated guide, which is truthfully what I need, so. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Let's get to the part that's like the beans, these different like herbs. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. <laughs> I feel like this is really gonna help me with world building, so. Yay. All right, it is officially time for bed. Let's see, can I get this to focus? Okay, 1300 words in the new project. The unnamed <laughs> new project. There all have to be something about naming in there. Uh, I ended up not working on this story as much as I thought I was going today. I was hoping I was going to be able to finish the first chapter, but as it turns out, I think I have like at least double. I need to get 1300 more words at least in this first chapter. <laughs> I ended up getting distracted with just like work work getting distracted like I had work to do. <laughs> yeah, it's 9.58 right now. 9.58, jeez. So I think I'm just gonna continue this vlog into tomorrow and it'll just be me writing and finishing this first chapter in the story. I am still really excited to see where it goes and how it ends up. At this point, it's a great distraction for me because even though it took a little bit longer than I was hoping, the Meridian Maps, aka Project Blue, is actually out in the query trenches now. And then Project Purple is off of beta readers. So for things that I think could 
possibly maybe eventually be traditionally published. I actually don't have anything that I'm working on and thus this project, which I do think I'm hoping to get traditionally published if that is a thing that could happen for me. Who knows? <laughs> I'm working on that. I'm still working. I have, oh, it just turned to 10. Supposed to be in bed by now. I'll probably reread what I've got tomorrow before I start and then I will just continue on with the story. I am finding that all of the dialogue tags are made harder. So initially today I was very excited because I was like, I don't have to use any names, but turns out names are super helpful. Who knew? <laughs> mm, I'm gonna have to come up with something. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Whew. All right, that's tomorrow me's problem. So. Good night. Oh. There we go. Dramatic. <laughs> Good morning. Let me pull this down a little bit more. <laughs> so it's now the next morning. I actually don't have a lot of time to work on this story today. I have about another hour, so from like 10 to 11, that I can work on it. So I'm hoping I can finish this first chapter up. Let's see. <laughs> but the first thing I have to do is I have to reread it so that I can kind of like get back on track. Truthfully, I think so much of writing for me is just rereading what I've done. Let's do that. <laughs> but no one had thought, no one could have known the disagreement would end in their deaths. Whew. All right, I'm now sitting at 1700 words in this project. I've almost written 500 words today almost. But I'm realizing, I don't know if you can tell, look at what my desk is lacking. If you thought coffee, you're right. Let's go get some. <laughs> oh, happy day indeed now that I got my coffee. <laughs> so the thing about writing in this way sometimes for me, actually just how I write in general sometimes is that I think of a really cool idea for where I want to go next in the chapter that's like, maybe a couple paragraphs from where I'm at. So I end up just like being like, I can't lose this idea. I want to like get to there and this is like a funny or quick or exactly how I'm trying to say the thing. So I'm like, better write it down. So what happens is that you end up with what I have here where it's like, okay, I had to skip a line, skip a line and then skip. So theoretically these two need to connect these two need to connect and then this needs to connect down here. But I don't have any of that middle part filled in yet. Does anybody else write like this? It's so weird because sometimes it flows straight through and other times I'll get a chapter and it's basically like almost 10 disjointed parts of the same scene. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I finished the chapter. It is sitting at 2,252 words. I don't know that I stitched everything together quite the way I wanted it to be, but I don't have any more time to work on this. And actually it is 1130, so I worked over on this. Ooh. I am still just so excited for where this story is going to go. I do think that tonight I'll probably actually fix up this chapter and see if I can't make it a little better than what it is right now so that when I reread it later, I'm not like, oh my gosh. But oh, ooh, ooh, I really like this premise. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to play with. I like the character I've set up. The main character and her relationship with her best friend, I'm very excited to explore it and the new armor that they're going to be traveling with toward the capital. And something I do already know is that there is going to be another death. Whether it's at the hand of my main character or not, I haven't decided yet. I say that, I have decided. I'm thinking right now, <laughs> like, oh, I know. So, I'm, oh, I'm so pumped for that. And I do know that for this first, like, four to five chapters, they're gonna be on the road. Actually, maybe three to four chapters. I don't want them on the road that long before they get to the capital. But then after that, I'm uh, really kind of drawing a blank on what all is going to happen. That's where I'm going to need to outline. But honestly, this isn't so different from how stories go for me a lot of the time. I know, uh, ooh, I just don't know the ending to this one either yet. So I guess I take that back. I don't know. <laughs> The more I think about it, the more I realize that when Becca and I have our write-in on her channel on Thursday, I think I'm actually going to be intermixing some of my outlining and some of the writing of chapter two in this story. So 
I am so freaking excited. It's fun at this point because there really is just so many question marks that I don't know what direction I'm gonna take it in. So it's really just a mystery to me and I feel like I'm getting to like, I don't know, is open a present a weird analogy for this? I feel like it's kind of slowly unraveling this present and at the end I might have a full story. Yeah, I don't know that that analogy works. <laughs> Thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see y'all very soon with a new video and I will see you on Thursday on Becca's channel for the write-in. Bye! Focus on my face! So, so, what was I even saying? I don't even know anymore. <laughs>